In this video, I will define what it means for a function to be continuous at a point, and I'll also talk about different discontinuities of functions. So first of all, what it means for a function to be continuous? Well, it means that you can draw the graph of that function without lifting your pencil or pen. So there are no holes, no, no place where you stop and then uh, go up to another place. Uh, it doesn't shoot up to infinity or down to negative infinity. Nothing like that happens. So it's just a, a smooth, you can think of it like that as well. Furthermore, let's think about it this way. How about at point C or value in x equals C? Well, for something, for a function to be continuous at this point when x equals C, well, first of all, some things have to be uh, met, some conditions have to be met. First of all, the function, when evaluated at that value, must exist. So that's our first uh, condition, and it's met there. We, we have a value there. There's no hole. The limit, the limit as x approaches c of this function must also exist. And it's possible, the reason we write both of those is that it's possible for, for one of these to be true and, and the other statement to be not true. Third, we kind of tie these together. The limit as x approaches c of f of x of the function must equal the function when evaluated at x equals c. And so we have that met. That is, coming in from the left and the right, the limits are the same, and so the limit as x approaches c does exist, and it equals it equals the value when you plugged in uh, c for x. So, so this is continuous at point c, and it looks like it's continuous elsewhere. There are no other points of discontinuity, at least for what we have uh, drawn here. Okay, now we're going to define each of the following as either removable, jump, infinite, or oscillating discontinuity. So for the first example, well, let me just clue you in. It's, it's easier to follow along if I just tell you these are in order, removable, jump, infinite, and, dis and oscillating discontinuity. So the first one is removable, and the reason it is is because we're going to see a discontinuity, a hole in the graph, but then we can change the function or further define a, a different function so that we remove the hole. So this right now, we know that when x equals 2, uh, the function is undefined. And so if we were to graph this to see what it looks like, we would uh, factor out the x minus 2, and we'd be left with x plus 2 in the numerator. And that would graph like this. We have a, a y-intercept of y equals 2 goes up, but we can't draw through x equals 2 because um, when x is 2, this is undefined. So this graph just looks like this. It does go beyond. I'm not going to draw it too far because I want to save some space, but it does keep going up and to the right. But when x is 2, this is undefined. But what can we do to remove this, this discontinuity? And, and, and no fair saying, hey, I can draw this without lifting my pencil because I'll just draw up to the circle and draw the circle and then keep going. Well, th the circle is symbolic, so, so really, uh, you know, you would have to lift up your pencil to skip over when x equals 2. Well, to remove this, we're going to play a little trick here. We're going to define this as saying, hey, when x is not equal to 2, this is what our function looks like. However, we'll make this piecewise and say, when x is equal to 2, we're just going to define the function as equaling 4. And that just fills that hole right there. So we, we're plugging along, we're graphing this, and, and we have to stop and say, oh, x is, x is 2. It doesn't, uh, when x is 2, it doesn't work up here. But the way we've defined this is that when x is 2, the function equals just 4. So we, we plug that hole. So that's why this is called a removable discontinuity, even though it the function as given was discontinuous at x equals 2, we, we defined a new function to make it continuous, and then it meets all these criteria.
All right, the next one. The next one is a jump discontinuity. And this one already is a piecewise defined function. Let's see what happens. If we have uh, this graph, x minus 1, we're only going to graph it up to where x is less than 0. So x minus 1. We have a hole here because it's just less than, strictly less than 0. And it shoots down like this. And that is the graph of x minus 1. But we can't go any farther with that. So we have to go to the next piece when x is greater than or equal to 0. Then we graph just the graph of x. g of x equals just x. Well, that has a y-intercept of 0. So it's just right here, closed circle, because it is including x equals 0. So it's defined everywhere. We don't have the same problem as the other graph, it, uh, that it is where it was undefined at x equals 2. It is defined, but there's a jump there. There's a clear jump. So I'm just going to circle this in orange to color code this. This is a jump discontinuity. All right, moving on with a new color. We'll do the uh, infinite discontinuity in red. We've seen this. This is a classic uh, function when you're taking the limits. The limits that go to infinity. And if you were to take the limit of this, you would see, or as x approaches 0, you would see it shoot up. And you would see it shoot up. And that is the graph. That's the graph of this function. So we would have to physically lift our pencil, it, and it goes up forever. It just, just keeps going up. So really, when could we cross over? Uh, that's, that's a tough question to answer. But when we hit 0, it's, it's undefined. But also, we would have to uh, lift our pencil up and then start back up here and then come back down. So we'd have to skip over that, that point where... Uh, where x is 0. And it's not removable. This is not a removable discontinuity because of the way it goes to infinity. So, so this is an infinite discontinuity. Or sometimes people call it asymptotic, right? It, it shoots up an asymptote. And it doesn't have to occur when x is 0. It, it can happen over here or, or anywhere. But just want to let you know that. OK, so this is an infinite discontinuity. Well, it shoots up to inf infinity or shoots down to negative infinity. The next one, this is, well, <laughs> it's neat for, for someone who, who likes to think about math, but uh, it, it can kind of give you a headache, I guess, when you think about how it works. The oscillating discontinuity. Oscillating discontinuity is what we have here. Well, think of the unit circle. The unit circle is like this, and the sine of 0 is certainly 0. But as x gets very close to 0, we're not taking the sine of 0. We're taking the sine of 1 over a very small number. Now, if x is 0, it's undefined. But we can't just plug a number in. It's not removable. Um, what happens? Well, as x gets closer and closer to, to 0, what happens is our our angle is changing it keeps changing it's here now and now it's here and now it's here because you're just getting closer and closer to zero you're, you're saying uh, 1 over 0 0.01 radians and then 1 over 0 0.001 radians and it just it just keeps going around and around can you understand how that's how the, the radians what you're taking here, what you're evaluating, is sign of just a, a very, very large angle. But you never know exactly where it is until you actually plug in a number. So it, it doesn't stay put. So it looks, let's get to the punchline here, it looks something like this, where it just keeps going back and forth and then balances out. Now that's a very rough sketch there. It depends on, let's not pay attention to the grid here because I've, I've grossly... Uh, gone outside of the boundaries. But this is what happens as it get, goes close to, to 0. So the grids are not equal to, to 1 unit here. But it comes in, and then it, it oscillates. It goes to big and small, and then back and forth, back and forth. So we can't remove it. it just, and it's not infinite. It's just oscillating. So that is the last of the types of discontinuities.